guys, I'm doing a quick video by request from one of my subscribers who wanted to get a closer look at how I paint without using painter's tape. Um, I want to preface this by saying that it is a skill learned from lots of practice. So it's not something that, you know, will come immediately, but it is possible. So just learning the technique will be what helps. So I'm going to, this is just a wall still in my girl's room. And I know the wall is eventually going to be painted. So I'm going to just take this small section and go ahead and show you how I paint without using painter's tape. In the video, I started with um, a smaller brush like this. It's an angled um, I forgot what it's called. It's, it's an angled brush, but it, there's one called a Wooster, and I think there's a midget brush or something like that. But this mini brush, I like it because it fits in my palm like this. So basically, I'm holding this like a pencil, and that's how I paint with it. I, I press down and paint with it in my hand like a pencil. But I'm also gonna show you the long handled brush that also has the angles. The handle is just more of a preference. The angles of the bristles are what allows you to create a line where you don't have to worry about um, using painter's tape. Perfecting the line is all about the pressure that you put on the bristles. And it's all in the wrist motion. Again, it's something that you have to practice over time. So if you take a look, I'll do it a dry run first, basically. So I'm holding it. Let me draw a line first, actually. So I'm going to use my level just to draw a straight line. Let me move down a little bit. Okay. So there's my line. And what I would do, I'm going to show you this, but I'm doing the dry run first. I start a little bit above what I'm trying to paint up against. So this could be baseboard. This could be a ceiling um, joint. Wherever you're trying to paint that you would normally, say, put paint tape right there. I go just above it, just so that I don't have too much paint on my brush. And you'll see when I actually do it with paint. But then I try to get an idea. I'm looking at these bristles right here. I'm looking at where they're landing as I'm pressing down. So once I get an idea of that, I'm looking at the bristle that is farthest down to know how much more pressure I need. Because the more I push down like this, the more I push down on the bristles, the more the bristles spread. So once I get an idea of where I want these bristles to be, and I can kind of see it, I try to stay above it first to see how that line is looking before I try to go to my actual line. And I note how much pressure I'm putting down on these bristles. And then I start to slide it like that. Now, when I want a crisp line, I do use tape, but for something like going around a ceiling or something like that, I just, it just takes up too much time. And most of the time I'm so anxious about um, <laughs> getting the project done or so excited about painting just in general that I don't want to be slowed down by having to tape. So let me show you with paint. And one of the things that you definitely should do from my last project, I didn't clean my brush immediately. And this is the result. Um, you always want to make sure that you clean your brushes good after your project so that you're not wasting them. Like this one is probably gonna have to go in the trash. I'm gonna try to see if I can um, at least show you guys with this brush, how um, how I do the lines, but it's paint stuck in here. So I really don't have control of the bristles like I would like. Don't be like me, wash your brushes. 
but this one this is a more expensive older brush um that i that i always wash out because one it was a little more expensive it's not one of the most expensive ones but it does have pretty good bristles in it and i did wash it out so i'm gonna show you with this one too and the let me add too that the quality of the line is also based on the quality of your brush brush and the bristles i'm gonna show you close up again that dollar store angled brush every brush isn't made equal i'm actually looking for it right now but every brush isn't made equal so it is important to get a good brush okay so I'm gonna start with this one just to see if I can um, get a line out of this. I don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush. Let's see if I could get the camera a little closer. Okay, I don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush. So as I was saying, like I play around above the space before I'm actually doing it. So this one, you can see how these bristles aren't really flaring out the way they should, but it's not making a bad line. It just, I just don't have control over the bristles because many of them are stuck together. But if I were trying to stay online, it would have done a decent job. You see how straight that line is? And it's because I know how much pressure that I needed to push down, just pushing down on the bristles and keeping my eye on where I want the bristles to go. So that's the little one. This is the dollar store one. And you can see how these bristles are going every which way. So you, again, you don't really have control over where the bristles go. You can give it pressure. Um, yeah, you can, you can adjust the pressure on it, but the bristles are still kind of going any way they want. So let me show you. And again, the key is not having too much paint on. This time, I'm going to try to go along this line. See, that's not even, it's not even picking up the paint good. So those bottom bristles, I should be able to control that. But there's not even any paint in there. It's not holding good. So I'm not getting up against that edge like I want. So let me show you the more expensive brush still have a little bit of paint and i want to gauge how much control i have and what i need to do so this time i'm gonna go up against this line and i right now i'm watching my bristles to see where i need to be I'm watching the longest bristle there that is touching. So like I said, I get some paint on the brush. Make sure it's not too much by testing along the top before I'm on my line. And then I go to my line and I'm looking at those bristles. And if you notice how I'm pressing, the closer that I want to get to that line, the more I'm going to press. So here I am. See how I'm pressing? That spreads the bristles out. So the, the harder I press down, the more my bristles spread. So when you're understanding how the bristles work and how they're holding the paint in there, it'll help you in being able to just go up against that line. And again, if I wanted a crisp line, I would probably use tape, but for something like this, um, I don't need tape. I'm fine with this line right here. And it saved me time from trying to um, tape it. 
So here's a little more. I go up toward the top first just to get rid of some of that excess. Then I get right on back down here, pressing down right across. So let me show you how this looks like on the baseboard. Most of the time I use tape for the baseboard. That's not true. That's not even true. Cause I don't want to tape. I don't like to tape, but here's what I would do on a baseboard. I'm getting my paint. I'm looking at my bristles to see where the one is closest to my line. And then that's the one I'm focusing on. If I need more pressure, then I'm still looking at that same bristle. If I need less pressure, I'm looking at that same bristle to make sure that it, um, it isn't putting out too much paint. So that, there you go. And then, so I would come back just because this is not a thick line, but now I have more space because I would then start with my roller. I love painting so much. So I will have that all the way around. Let me show you. Let's get a little closer. Wait, where's the... There you go. All righty. Hopefully that helped out. And if you have any other questions about anything that you've seen in one of my videos and you want more details, just feel free to comment and I'd be happy to share my techniques. Thanks. Hey guys, I was asked a few questions about the paintbrush I was using in my last video. So I'm gonna show you, I'm at Walmart right now, I'm gonna show you what it was that I was using. So this is one of them. It's just a short handled slanted um, paintbrush. This one was $7.94. I normally get them for about five or six dollars, but I guess everything has gone up now. So I'm not surprised, but I'm gonna open it up and show you what it looks like. So there we go. It has the, oh, sorry y'all. It has the angled brush really short handle and that's what I was talking about it fits right in the palm of your hand and just gives you more um, control of the brush so that's that one there's another one um, here's one that's a little bigger and then this one is smaller so if you really want to get into those small cracks let me open this one up and show you so again still has that slanted brush but this one has a longer handle so you can play with it and see which ones work best for you i like the shorter handle brush but i do want to show y'all this this is pretty awesome it's kind of the same concept only thing I don't like about this is the bristles. They're not very uniform. And I don't know if that's because they're not in packaging or whatever, but this grip right here will give you control too in trying to make that same kind of line that I talked about before. And it comes in different sizes. I don't see a price on them though. Here's a smaller one. I'm going to try it out, but it's the same. At some point, I'm not buying it today, but it's the same thing. If this were the edge of my wall, I would try to press down like that to make my straight line. But I see all these strays. This, the bristles are not that good. 
so that doesn't really make it a good brush but the concept is good let me know if you decide to try it you don't hold the grip free paintbrush it holds on to you so i definitely think one of my viewers should go ahead and try this out and tell me what's going on